Number five, just for two marks, solve this quadratic equation. You'll probably call that a trinomial because it's a quadratic with all three parts. That's the hardest one. Well, factorise it. It's quite easy to begin with because to make x squared, it can only be an x times an x. Yeah, I'm just going to be doing it using the pattern for multiplying out the brackets. The first times the first makes the first. The last times the last makes the last. But then there's the inner and the outer, that's the other two mixtures, to make this 11. Well, the last times the last makes the 24, there's quite a few choices. 1 times 24, 2 times 12, 3 times 8, 4 times 6. Running out of space, there's only a 5 left in between, so that's them all. The rest are just repeats going back up the other side. But which is it? Well, they have to add, not that sign, they have to add to make 11. So 3 and the 8. Not only that, if that middle term is negative, that means the larger of the inner and the outer are negative. But in this case, it's simple because they're both going to be negative if they have to multiply back to make a positive. So the answers are, if that equals 0, x is 3. If that equals 0, x is 8. Number 6. Part of the graph of y equals a cos bx is shown here. Just state, one mark each, state the values of a and b. Well, a is the amplitude. How high does it get? How low does it get? From the middle position, it goes up 5, down 5. a is 5. b is the frequency of it. How often does it reappear in 360? Well, it only takes 90. It just says state, but the way they would work that out would be, well, how many 90s are there in 360? That's four. There would have been four of these wavelengths by 360, so B is four. Number seven. The cost of a journey depends on the distance traveled. This graph shows how the cost in pounds varies with the distance d miles travelled. These are two points in the journey and it's giving you some figures for them. A represents now, miles is first, so that's like the coordinate 8 along and the cost was 14, so 14 up. B was 12 miles, so that's 12 along and 20 up. And for three marks it says, what's the equation of that line? Well the first thing would be get its gradient. Now usually when you write gradient, you do y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. See, there's no y's and x's. I could still get away with that if I just put inverted commas around it to say that's the form I'm going to use. The gradient will now be the equivalent of the y coordinates. That would be the 20 take away the 14 over x2 minus x1, or the equivalent of the x coordinates, 12 take away 8. Well, 20 take away 14 is 6, 12 take away 8 is 4, I'll need to cancel that down, so it goes to 3 up and 2. Or if you wanted, you could write m equals 1.5. Now, the equation of a line. You know the form y minus b is mx minus a. But again, there's no y's and x's. That's just the form I'm going to use. Now, I have to be careful. y is the name of this axis, which is actually p. b it's the second coordinate and a point I want to choose, so I'll be the 14. M will be one of those. Maybe I'll go for the 1.5, since it's just money. You wouldn't talk about three upon two pounds and things like that. X is the name along this axis, that's a D. A is the first coordinate, that's the 8. So P is going to equal 1.5D, that's okay. 8 times 1 and a half, that's 12, so it'll be minus the 12, but plus the 14, you have to tidy that up. So P equals 1.5D plus 2. There's a variety of forms you could put that into. You could leave it as 3 up and 2. You could take 2 across and multiply things out so there's no fractions. But that's a perfectly acceptable form in this case because you're talking about money. So in part B, What's the cost of a journey of 5 miles? In other words, D equals 5. So what's P? It'll be 1.5 times 5 plus 2. 5 fives are 25. 
carry the 2, 5 ones are 5 and 2 7, it's 7.5 plus 2, which is 9.5. But since it's money, put in two decimal places. Eight, determine the nature of the roots of this function. Well, two marks, you'll be using the discriminant. B squared minus four AC, just take a bee know what they are. A means the coefficient, how many X squares there are. B is the coefficient of X, how many X's there are, and C is the number on its own. So you just put it into that. So that would equal four squared minus 4 times 2 times 5. Well, 4 squared is 16. 4 times 2 is 8 times 5 is 40. So that's negative. It doesn't actually matter what it is. Once it goes negative, that's it. But we'll finish that off. That's negative 24. Now, since that, since negative 24 is less than 0, that means f of x has no real roots, we shall say, since it used the word roots in the question.